He's the key that turns the ignition for them. That's what Tennessee coach Josh Heupel had to say about Carson Beck when he was asked about the Georgia Bulldog offense. Of course, Heupel had a lot to say about Georgia, Carson Beck, their defense. I'm going to talk all about that in today's video. I'm going to talk about some of Kirby Smart's comments about Tennessee, kind of breaking the game down just a little bit more because we're two days away, season on the line in Athens for another match, uh, massive matchup, if I could say that, with the Tennessee Volunteers who have lost seven straight to the Dogs. Josh Heupel's 0-3 against Georgia. Uh, the Dogs have won each of those games by more than 14 points or 14 points or more, right? So this is a massive game anyway for Josh Heupel, but they've got, you know, a chance to uh, push a playoff ticket in, right? They've got to beat Georgia, and I'm pretty sure they have to beat, beat Vanderbilt to get in as well but he knows how big this game is uh his opening statement about georgia here's what it was this week he said you look at them in every phase of the game and they're extremely talented they play hard they coach hard they make you earn it it will be a great environment and a great opportunity for us he said uh kind of adding on to what he said earlier with another comment uh again you just have to earn everything against him that's what he said like two or three times during that press conference and he's right because his offenses have had a very very hard time not only scoring but moving the football on Georgia of course last year Georgia just throttled them in their building right walk into your trap and take over your trap that's what they did that was the music that they were blaring it was exactly right of course before that number one ranked Tennessee offense coming to town and Georgia just rubbed it in their face completely shut them down uh, but he said you have to earn everything against them. And this, this is where he goes off a little bit. You can laugh if you want about this next part. This is coach speak to a T. And he sounds a lot like Kirby Smart in these press conferences. He goes, they're talented offensively. They've got playmakers on the outside. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, good offensive line. They weren't good last week. Talented running backs. But they're all injured except for freshman Nate Frazier right now. Uh Carson Beck's a dynamic player. Is he? Uh, defensively, they're a typical Georgia defense. Now, we got that part right. Um, Georgia's not as elite um, uh, defensively as we've seen them in the past, but they're still very good. I think both of these defenses are two of the best in the country, and that's why I think this is going to be a low, ugly scoring game. First team to 20, right? Uh, first team to score two touchdowns, I think, could win this game. Uh, it's going to be really tough for Georgia, I think, to move the football on Tennessee's front seven. And we'll talk about that in a second because Kirby Smart mentioned that. But someone did ask Josh Apple specifically, who is it was a very good quarterback in his own right, right? He knows the position. He knows how to win. He knows how to put up numbers. But someone asked him about Carson Beck's struggles, and he kind of laughed it off. He said, listen, he's an extremely talented quarterback who's played extremely well over the course of the season. That's not really true, but coach speak, right? He's the key that turns the ignition. That's where he said that part. Uh, playing quarterback, sometimes what people see isn't just the quarterback play. It takes all 11 playing together. He's a really good football player. So he didn't really, you know, take the bait on why he's been struggling, how he's been struggling. He just was like, you know what? We saw this kid last year coming to Knoxville and throw three touchdown passes, no interceptions, just completely carve us up so they know how good Carson Beck is and they expect a really tight game of course Josh always has good things to say about Georgia he does every year but he's straight to the point he said what happens last year doesn't matter uh someone asked him about the difference in his team now than two years ago when they came to Athens number one in the country best offense in college football uh and they got embarrassed and he said well we're a little more prepared now um we know what it takes. We, you know, our guys have been in our system longer. Our coaches were more understanding of what we want to do. So we're more experienced and, and, you know, we're a better team than they were that, um, as far as, you know, understanding the offense, that's what he said. But then you look and I, I mean, they're, they've scored 30 points once in SEC play. And it was last week against Mississippi state. I think Georgia's done it five times. Okay. So people can talk about Georgia struggling offense, uh, and Carson Beck struggling and they're right. Georgia's offense has been better than Tennessee's for most of this year, basically throughout the year, except last week, right? And again, George played Ole Miss on the road. Tennessee played Mississippi State, right? So take what you want from, from those two games, but I think Georgia's offense has been better than Tennessee's, and Georgia's probably been a little more banged up. And 
I don't know if Nico, not even going to try to pronounce the last name. Maybe I'll get it next year, but I don't know if he's playing or not. I don't think it's going to matter. I think even if he was healthy, he would really, really struggle against this Georgia defense on the road. I mean, Kidd has not been lighting it up this year. He's really struggled against worse defenses. I don't think even if he was healthy, he's coming into Athens and lighting up this defense in front of that crowd. It's just not happening. So I don't care who the quarterback is. I think Tennessee is going to really struggle. But if you're Georgia, you've got to stop them. I mean, they're not going to get in the red zone many times, I think. But when they do, you got to stop them from getting in the end zone. If Tennessee's kicking field goals all night long, I think Georgia can win this game. But, you know, for Georgia offensively, the complete opposite, right? you got to get in the end zone. You can't settle for field goals, right? So I – each time this team, these teams get into the red zone, which is going to be tough in its own right, got to find a way to score touchdowns. Whoever scores touchdowns instead of field goals is going to win this game. Uh, but, you know, Tennessee, at least, they've got a running game, or they've got a running back that's very, very good. Here's what Kirby had to say um, about Dylan Sampson, if I can find it. He goes, um, he's stubborn, man. That's what Kirby said. He's stubborn. They're physical. He's an elite runner. He, uh, the runs they run are sometimes not traditional. They run some runs that other people don't run because of the space in the box. He's very patient. He hits small creases. He's hard to tackle. You don't put up how many touchdowns he has in the SEC, 20-something. That's crazy. In the SEC, the SEC is the hardest league in the world to run the football on because they've got the most size of a defensive lineman. And he continues to do it at a crazy pace to me. It seems like he's been there for a while. I totally get that. I know where he's from in Louisiana. They do nothing but have great backs in that area. He reminds me of so much of Alvin Kamara. He's very smooth and elusive. So Tennessee's got a running back. And if you're Georgia, you've done a great job of stopping the run for the most part, most of this season, right? Got to stop the run here and make those quarterbacks throw the football because that's where the turnovers are going to be created. Um, this dude's not fumbling the ball very often. You want to stop the run, make Tennessee's quarterback, whoever it is, throw the football, then attack, then create some turnovers because I think those are a must. The Georgia defense has to help out the offense, force some turnovers, give them some early, or, um, excuse me, um, uh, good field position. What am I trying to say? An advantage, uh, you know, shorter fields. That's what I'm trying to say. Shorter fields. They did it against Ole Miss early in the game. Georgia took advantage, but that was it. And unfortunately, the way Georgia's offense right now, the defense might have to help them out a little bit uh, and create more pressure, more turnover, something they absolutely did against Texas, and it helped the offense there too, right? So unfortunately, this is a team that might have to depend on the defense to help the offense, if that makes sense. But um, they're, Georgia's not running the football. They're inconsistent at wide receiver. The offensive line's coming up off their worst performance of the year. It's not going to get any easier. I expect Carson Beck and the Georgia offense to have a – a real struggle, a real struggle against this Tennessee defense, which is not only one of the best they're going to see all year, but one of the best in college football right there with Georgia. So I expect both defenses to play very well. Uh, but who who can make that play? Who can win the game in the trenches? Again, Georgia's beat up, and I'm not saying Tennessee's not, right? Their starting quarterback is very much, you know, beat up, right? He's not 100%. But George is extremely thin at running back. They're still mixing and matching on the offensive line. They've got to depend on receivers that just shouldn't be playing if guys like Rara Thomas and Colby Young and Anthony Evans uh, were a little healthier, right? So uh, th this is not a healthy Georgia team. This is not a Georgia team that's blowing teams out. Uh, they just they, – they've got to play better. Uh, they've got to be able to run the football because if Tennessee knows that Carson Beck is dropping back to pass every third and – medium third and long – Dude's going to be running for his life. I mean, he's already got bruises, I'm sure, from the Ole Miss defense. And Tennessee's going to come after him. So Georgia, however they can, they've got to run the football. That means putting Dylan Bell back there, just handing it to him to help out uh, Trevor Etienne and Nate Frazier and Cash Jones. That's what they got to do. But season's on the line. I, I want to see some, some explosive plays in the trick game, right? Because they're not getting explosive plays organically. I want to see Mike Bubba draw something up that we haven't seen. I mean, they've been very successful with that running back toss, uh, you know, throw it to uh, an A.D. Mitchell or Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint, right? That running back sweep, he throws it to a wide open guy in the end zone, whether it's a tight end or a wide receiver. They've run that a, a lot over the last few years. Haven't seen it much this year. A triple fake side, George reverse, it's something, anything 
that can keep the Georgia crowd into it, can give you some explosives so you're not having a nickel and dime up and down the field every time you get a ball. You're not going to score many points that way. If you're not explosive naturally, you've got to create some type of trick play or something offensively to try to get a big monster play down the field, get the crowd into it, um, and score some early points. I think that's key too. This is not a Georgia team that's very good coming from behind. Get some points early, get the crowd into it, and play from ahead most of this game, and I think Georgia will come out on top. Thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you over on the website.